Good early morning, we're so glad you're here. We eat daily vlog. So if you like this video, come back tomorrow. We kind of had a restless e night. Yes. Not getting good, too much sleep because mm -hmm. of moving positions and everything, but we had a breakthrough at, what, 5 o'clock? Mm -hmm. She was only 5 centimeters dilated. We were kind of bummed because we didn't see too much progression there, but we saw good contraction changes. Mm -hmm. And then, two hours later, Full of face, mm -hmm. eight to nine centimeters dilated. Yeah, so we are getting there. We're getting ready to go. This is to show you how serious we are. The infant warming system is on, he heating up. Got our baby's first swaddle and our baby's first diaper right there. You have been an absolute rock star this whole time. So proud of you. Thank you. She's got some shivers because they just pumped her with some extra. Yeah, I got a little color. bit of extra um, medicine. Oh, my, my blood pressure's going. So um, breathe, breathe heavy. She's notorious for. For getting to breathe. But soon, I don't know. They said it enough time to get a little cat nap in there, so maybe you should try to chill. Yeah. Before we. Get together. She's in this crazy position. We've been doing crazy positions like this, which like push Sarah's limit of uncomfortableness, but we're really and helpful. That's why I got the extra medicine because the little switch of gravity and whatnot kind of made the epidural wear off in certain places. Yes, but this was important to get him to move down because that was like the last piece I feel that we were missing. It's yeah. like we were getting contractions with the medicine. Your water broke, mm -hmm. but you weren't dilating as much because I feel like he wasn't pushing down himself. Hey, what would we just find out? 10 centimeters. Ready 10 to centimeters. Push. Complete. Plus one position. Ready to push. About to meet our baby. And you're going to do so great. We are doing the IUI this month. Woohoo! So if you haven't realized, and I think we said it once before, whenever we hear bad news, aka we find out Sarah's not pregnant, or we hear good news about like doing another step, we always go get food. I am just so extremely proud of him. Once he saw the runners last year and like felt that momentum and it was right around the time where um, we scheduled my surgery and we were really getting everything in order and he wanted to do everything he could do um, to make you know the possibility of us having children even possible um, he's been so dedicated to it and even when we are successful in whatever we end up having a baby in whether it's IVF IUI's adoption or whatever it is like our fertility journey isn't ending with just one baby. So right. mm -hmm. at some point, we're gonna start it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Let's do it. My little warrior, my champ. He did it. How many? 16. 16 eggs. But I got this in Macy's on State Street, November 2015, after we talked about starting our family. Not too long after the last clip, I got the email that the test was negative. We're going to our fertility specialist. Let's get set up for this IVF round two, fingers crossed. And this right here, get ready. We started getting it all set last time. Gotta say, Sarah's the best. She always is and always will be, but I am so proud of her because what we've gone through since the miscarriage in October, you know, is the hardest thing we've ever dealt with and I presume one of the hardest things in the entire world. She's just been a beaming light of hope and inspiration and love and I know she's ready for this transfer, I'm ready for this transfer, Eve's ready for this transfer, but the physical and emotional like level that Sarah's at is just awe-inspiring.
<laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Open his eye. Hi, baby. Well, do these look like the faces of two new parents? <laughs> I think so. You might hear some beeping and noises because I have compression things on my legs. Because I had surgery today. <laughs> Sarah had major surgery. So, as you just saw earlier, um, I think the last clip clip we had before the day went crazy was us really excited that Sarah got to completely a face 10 centimeters okay plus one push. distance okay to push and that's when at 7 30 in the morning when Sarah started pushing the day went sideways yes so I ended up pushing for three hours um, non-stop what had happened was James you know how he had been breached the whole pregnancy basically so he wasn't head down he wasn't head down he flipped and we were going to try to do, you know, an, a different, like, not have to do a C-section and just deliver naturally. Um, but he was still just, like, not perfectly in the birthing canal. Yeah, imagine, like, your head up and down is mm -hmm. the right way, typical way for a baby to come out. His was turned, so, like, his yeah. ears, rather than his ears being like this, sideways. they were like this. Yeah. So that doesn't work out to go through the, the canal. And then on top of that, his body, the rest of his body was turned yeah, like a chair. So, and so we tried really hard. We really wouldn't have known that until I was far enough along. For the um, midwife to tell, like felt his head not turn yes. the right way. And so I was in a lot of pain um, because I had been on the epidural for a long time. Come to find out that... It wasn't perfectly in its place, Placed. and it started leaking, um, and so I was in a lot of pain. So Sarah did a three-hour push, and all of and our and not a complete epidural. Yeah, um, and so we made the call. They gave us the option to do one last round of medicine and really try to get um, what pretty much to just said like one last push, like thirty more minutes of push with like the whole medical staff trying to assist mm -hmm. and then they would like not allow Sarah to try to push again right and then go to a c-section um and so we just made the call we said I'm in too much pain <clears throat> we're going to a c-section there was some miscommunication between our birthing team and anesthesiologists which left me in a decent amount of pain while the OR um, got prepared for me. Like they took out her ill-performing epidural before, with too much time left to go to the yeah, OR. Because even though it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. It was still some relief. Yeah. So then she was just laying there, <clears throat> in full-on contractions, <laughs> ten centimeters dilated. Mm -hmm. um, just waiting. Just waiting and just like excruciating pain, mm -hmm. and, but like there was confusion of like what could her the midwife and nursing staff give her to calm the nerves but they couldn't do anything because she was technically in the hands of the anesthesiologist and they couldn't give her anything because they were waiting to give her a spinal tap. Yeah, so because typically, like, if you're delivering um, with an epidural and then you end up having a C-section, they can just modify the medicine in your epidural to go to a C-section, but they had to take my epidural out, so then the next option then is to do a spinal tap. <clears throat> well, then I go into the OR without me without Peter because he has to wait during that portion um, mind you you sign away a lot of scary things um, and the spinal tap did not work no they did it they like they, they, did put, it. they put it in and everything it wasn't pleasant um, and I did not go numb from it I went numb in my legs and so they kept on poking in front of me did not go numb and so the only option then was to put me under general anesthesia Mind you, Peter's not in the operating room. He's waiting, 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 didn't hear anything. Finally, someone came out. Like, I was told, okay, C-section straightforward. They're going to spinal tap her. We don't want you to be in there and see because you could faint or something. We don't need two patients. So you're going to wait outside this door for 10 minutes. It's going to feel like eternity because you're going to be nervous for your wife, but it's only going to be 10 minutes. We'll come, we'll give her a spinal tap. We'll come get you, bring you back cut the baby out five minutes later you're holding your son everyone's yeah. happy and i so, sat outside that door mm -hmm. for 40 minutes before somebody came out and said 
Mr. Burkhardt? And I was like, yes. And they're like, oh, your wife may have to go under general anesthesia. We don't know yet, but we're still figuring out, but she might. And I was like, oh, okay, so can I come back? And they're like, no, if, she, if they end up going general anesthesia, you can't go back there. Mm -hmm. And then another 20 minutes later, somebody else comes back and brings me back to some recovery room. Oh, yeah, your wife did have to go under general anesthesia. They put her under, and they got the baby out. I was like, okay. And then they were like, well, they were fixing up Sarah because there was extra bleeding and stuff from all the anesthesia she'd been on for the past... Been on a lot of medicine, too. ...for the past 24 hours. And I was like, well, can I see my son? And they're like, well, the... Your baby's with NICU team to make sure everything's okay. Come wait in this recovery room for your son. I was like, but if something's wrong, they're going to take him to the NICU. And I was like, well, then I want to go to the NICU if something's wrong. They're like, you can't do that. I'm like, so what am I doing? And they're like, you're going to wait here for your son if he's okay. And then this is where your wife's going to come out, given that like everything goes well with the, the rest of the surgery. Yeah. So after waiting an hour, I'm just like in this recovery room. It was something else. By myself. And then my son shows up, and I couldn't even pick him up or anything because of the surgery and everything to get him out they had to like do sensors and tests and everything on him and then we still waited another like 15 minutes just me and james for sarah to come out and it, the whole time i'm like sarah's completely out she didn't see james mm -hmm. come out she was knocked so out so peter was not in the operating room and i was to so neither of us were there for his act well i was there but, but you weren't coherent was, yeah. and then I don't even really remember going under the anesthesia so i literally just like all of a sudden was waking up and James and Peter were sitting next to me, and I'm just like totally out of it, like trying to like put the pieces together of what even happened. And Sarah um, pushed so hard for three hours and did so good. I need to reiterate that a million times, and we're gonna say that the rest of my life. Is that like so? We we had every intention on vlogging, like James coming out and being mm -hmm. placed on Sarah. We had a camera. The nurse said it's great, it's fine, it's okay. And I was gonna turn on during the last couple pushes. Like it, to have his first cry and yeah. stuff and. Yes. And she just worked so hard and like for three and a half hours. like Plus the whole induction process. Yeah, the two days of induction. Yeah. Every person we talked to was like, oh, you're the one who literally has experienced every bit of labor by doing three rounds of this, two rounds of this, this balloon, that, this, that, to get the induction. And then three hours of labor. Yeah. And so we don't regret no. making that choice. We're really happy that we tried and that we did our best and we learned so much like this has never been our territory um infertility has and so being here like we learned a ton um so i will have to recover from the c-section so we're gonna be in the hospital and a few we've more been days in our, um, <laughs> we've been in our room with james all day and he's like perfect like i'm so happy that through all the trauma today nothing was ever wrong with him yeah never it's he's never dropped heartbeat and right. like they were worried for him yeah no he was perfect the whole time and he's been perfect since he's now what 12 he's 16 hours old oh. and he has gotten some it's vaccines four in the it's four in the morning so we just really wanted to give that update let you know what happened we posted on social media later in the evening that he had arrived um but it's very clear as to why we did not post at all. Right, today. and even for our family, like or we, vlog we, today. we told our we literally close, fell off the face of the earth. We told our friends and family at seven thirty, <laughs> hey, she just got called, she just got checked, ten seven ten centimeters, time to push. And we didn't text anybody until, until after she came out of surgery. And I was like texting just like immediate family being like hey, Sarah's actually has to go under, and I won't be with her until after there was some complications and blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, okay, I'm with James, but Sarah's still not here yet. Okay, Sarah's with me. I've got both of them, and they're okay. But, but we then, didn't tell, like, our our friends and, like, really start giving, like, the full details out Well, then, later, like, because we were in recovery. Both of you were in recovery for two hours. Mm -hmm. So from 7.30 a.m. to start pushing to actually in our, recover our, like, official room, this room, with Sarah and James, like, being ready to just relax wasn't until, like, 6.30 or 7 p.m. Yeah. But we had sushi for dinner at 2 a.m. And we've just, just been, been snuggling our baby. The sweetest. we have so. a little baby. Yeah, he's awake. So we'll show him. We'll hopefully get him to sleep. And then... For a couple hours. Yeah, because we'll, we're being checked a lot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, here's James Ryan Brookhart. Oh wait, he's 
7 pounds, 8 ounces. Nope. 8 pounds, 7 ounces, 21 inches. And he was born at 1234. So one, his, two, three, four. his birthday, his birth time is 1234. And his birthday is 11 1. So 1 1 1. Very That's cool. cool. So this is our son. He was showing signs of being a little hungry, so we just took him out. He's wide awake. The, the, the craziest part of the first 24 hours of this baby's life is I had no idea how often the like doctors and nurses were coming by. It's literally been like every hour and a half. Yeah. And so finally now it's 4.20 in the morning. We're about to get an almost two-hour break. So Welcome we're like going to feed to him. Right, we're going to feed him and then try to get some shut-eye for all three of us because he hasn't even continuously slept for long. Right. Um, it's good to be home. It's good to be home. It's good to be home to my first vlog. Happy birthday, dear James. Happy birthday to you. He was just like, We know what our goals are, we know what we hope to accomplish, and believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.